Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be having a look at how we can define the factorial of a matrix. So right away we're presented with a little bit of an issue because our factorial right here is only defined for the natural numbers including 0. And unfortunately our matrix right here, our 2x2 two two matrix, is not an element of the natural numbers. So we're kind of stuck there a little bit. But uh, fortunately we do have kind of like an alternative... Um, function for our factorial right here that acts the exact same way but has a little bit of a um, different definition and we're talking about the pi function right here so if we have pi of let's say some number x let's say x was just a natural number in this case well that's the exact same thing as saying x factorial and the nice thing with using the pi function is that it actually has an integral representation so the pi function of x we can write this in terms of an integral namely the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus t t to the x dt so our argument you know pi function right here x appears in the exponent of this t right here and whatever this integral evaluates to, depending on whatever number x we put in, that's going to be pi of x or x factorial. So equivalently, this integral, this is also the integral representation of x factorial. So by using this definition right here, we can kind of extend the notion of our factorial right here. Because now if we use the pi function, we can almost plug in anything we want given that we can evaluate the integral that comes out the end and that can be our way of redefining our x factorial right here so before we get into this specific example right here we want to have a look at a more general case let's consider some matrix capital m like so and we're just dealing with two by two matrices in this video um you can extend it out to any n by n matrix you want really but let's just deal with the two by two matrix in this video so we have our m and we want to take the factorial of this matrix m so as i said before this is the exact same thing as taking the pi function of our m and well pi function of m we can rewrite it in terms of an integral so this is the exact same thing as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus t t raised to the nth power dt like so Okay, and notice our matrix M right here, it appears in the exponent of this T. And this is the part we want to kind of deal with first of all. So in a previous video, I've defined the exponential matrix. So whenever you have E raised to some matrix M, but now when we don't really have um, E anymore. We have some other number, or in this case, in the context of this integral, it's a variable. But uh, if we just isolate t to the m by itself you can think about this t as just some random constant and this is what we want to kind of define in this video so i'll put a link to my exponential matrix video in the description um, if you want to check that out but we want to kind of define t to the m right now so first of all let's take a look at this t right here notice that t that can be expressed as e to the natural log of t and since we're raising something to the power of something else we're just multiplying it into the exponent so this is the exact same thing as e to the m times the natural log of t okay and you see here we can kind of use the um, power series expansion for our exponential function right here because we can rewrite this as being the infinite sum so sum from let's say n equals 0 to infinity of our argument raised to the nth power so our argument in this case is m times natural log of t I'm actually going to um, expand that out to being m to the nth power natural log to the nth power of t so natural log to the nth power that's just natural log of t but raised to the nth power and all that junk divided by n factorial so now we have it in this form right here we want to have a look at our m just like i did with my other video we want m to be some kind of diagonalizable matrix because if we can do that if we can diagonalize m we can express it in this form right here with the d being our diagonal matrix and the nice um, property of diagonalization is if you raise our m here to some power n well, you just need to raise our d to the nth power as well. This is a nice property that we're going to use. And what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to define some diagonal matrix D. So let D be this matrix D1, 0, 0, D2. 
really don't care what d1 and d2 are because notice we're raising this diagonal matrix to the nth power and whenever you raise the diagonal matrix to the nth power let's just write it down here well then you're just raising the entries inside to the nth power but uh, if we can do this right here then what we can actually do is we can rewrite m to the nth power as being p and then d1 to the nth power 0 0 d2 to the nth power p inverse like so and so now what we can do is we can make a replacement for our m to the n right here. We're going to replace it with all of this stuff. And while I'm doing that, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to bring this p and this p inverse out to the front and the back of this whole entire sum respectively. Remember, we're dealing with matrices right here, so order does still matter. So if we do that replacement, we're going to get p and then infinite sum from n equals 0 to infinity um, of... Let's see, I'm going to have d1 to the n, 0, 0, d2 to the n, that's log to the nth power of t, over n factorial, and then we still have p inverse hanging off the ends. Okay, and now what I'm actually going to do is we're going to take a look at this, this matrix right here, and notice we're kind of multiplying this natural log and this n factorial into this matrix as well. So why not multiply both of those into the entries of the matrix. That's something we can do with matrices. So now we can rewrite this as P times the infinite sum from n equals zero to infinity of a matrix. And if we multiply those two in, we're going to get natural log um, to the nth power of T, D1 to the n, uh, zero, actually over n factorial as well, zero and natural log to the nth power of T, D2 to the n over n factorial, Close off that matrix and we have a P inverse hanging off the ends. Okay, we're almost done now because notice now we're summing a bunch of matrices together. And in fact, whenever you sum matrices together, you're summing the respective entries together as well. So here you see we're summing a bunch of matrices from n equals zero to infinity. Well, that's the exact same thing as summing each of these entries in here from n equals zero to infinity. So what we can actually do is kind of move this sum inside of here. And actually, let me just get rid of this big sum on the outside. I'll just move it in on this line as well, just to save some space. So I'll just write as a sum for now. And notice that these two sums in the matrix now look pretty much the exact same as our original sum. But instead of having M right here, we have D1 and D2. And what does that mean? And if you look at our original expression right here, instead of having T to the M, we're going to instead have t to the d1 and t to the d2 because both of these sums will evaluate to something like this but instead of having m we have d1 and d2 in these two entries right here so what does this look like it's going to look like p times this sum's going to evaluate to t raised to the d1 0 0 t raised to the d2 and a p inverse like so so what exactly did we just find right here? We found that if we want to raise t to the nth power, and if m is some diagonalizable matrix, then we can express it in this form right here, where we have p and p inverse still. And instead of just having our diagonal matrix in the middle right here, instead of just having d1 and d2 on the inside, we're taking t to whatever powers they are. So overall, in this little section, we found that t to the m can ex be expressed in this form right here. And that's quite nice because we're going to use this definition of t to the m in our integral right here. So going back to our integral, we can do a little bit of a replacement. Uh, just like the sum, I'm going to bring this p and this p inverse out to the front and the back respectively because they're just kind of like constants in terms of this integral. So if we do that replacement, what we're going to get is p times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus t and t to the m we've already taken care of this p we just have this matrix in the middle so t to the d1 0 0 t to the d2 and then we have a dt i'm going to bring this p inverse out to the back like so okay very nice and what i'm actually going to do now just like before the sum we have a matrix times something on the outside right here and all we can actually do is multiply this something into each of these entries right here so if we do that we're going to get p times the integral from zero to infinity of a matrix and then we're going to have e to the minus t t to the d1 zero zero e to the minus t t to the d2 and then dt p inverse 
Okay, and now you see we're integrating a matrix. And in fact, whenever you integrate a matrix, just like with a sum, you're integrating each of the entries on the inside together. So instead of integrating a matrix full of functions from zero to infinity, now we're integrating these entries right here from zero to infinity. And we don't have to worry about these zeros because the integral of zero is just zero. So now what we're left with is P times matrix integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus T, t to the d1, dt, 0, 0, integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus t, t to the d2, dt, and p inverse. And you see, these two integrals in here, just like the sum, they look very familiar because they're pretty much this pi function right here, the definition of the pi function. But instead of having our m right here, we have d1 and d2. And what that means is these two integrals represent pi of d1 and pi of d2 respectively. So overall, this whole thing here actually simplifies to p times pi function of d1, 0, 0, pi function of d2, and p inverse. And remember the pi function, we can think about it as the factorial or you can keep it as the pi function if you want. If these entries right here happen to be like negative numbers or complex numbers or whatever, then we would keep it as a pi function. But I'm just actually gonna turn it into factorials just to make things a bit cleaner. So we're gonna have p, d1 factorial, zero, zero, d2 factorial, and p inverse. And there you go, that's our little formula for evaluating m factorial if m is a diagonalizable matrix. So pretty much all you do, you diagonalize M and then you take the diagonal matrix and you take the factorial of the diagonal entries, excluding zero. We don't want to deal with these zeros right here. Then you just multiply everything back together and you get M factorial as we want. So let's just actually do a very quick example right now. I'm not going to diagonalize any matrices in this video. It's just going to take too long. Um, but we're just gonna take a look at this example. I'll give you the diagonalization right away and I'll just do a quick example, I guess. So for one negative two, one factorial, we wanna take a look at this matrix right here. Let's just call this matrix M, just like before. And well, M, we, if we diagonalize M, what we're gonna get is something like negative a half, negative one, 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 and two, zero, zero, three and 2, 2, negative 2, negative 1. And that's the diagonalization of M. And if we want to take M factorial, all we need to do is slap a factorial sign on these diagonal entries right here. And it turns out that 2 factorial is exactly 2, and 3 factorial is exactly 6. So we're still going to have 2 and 6. And if you multiply all of this stuff together, do a bunch of matrix multiplication, what you should end up with is 10 for negative eight and negative two. And this thing right here is exactly for one, negative two, one factorial. So indeed you still can define the factorial of a matrix, even though factorials are only defined for natural numbers, including zero, but um, using the process we've just gone through, you still in fact can still define the matrix factorial. So yep, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see everyone next time.